Newsletter, 435, 29th of the 6th, 2008. Title of our newsletter, They Ruined My Life. And we're going to hear a lot more of that as the days go by. They Ruined My Life, Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived, God, who is Jesus, is not mocked by mere humans, for whatever a man or woman sows, that they shall also reap. And if you were to read the next verse in your Bible, verse 8, we know what it's on about. It's not about money. It's about hell and heaven. Galatians 6, 8. It talks about eternal life, salvation. I tell you what, everything we look at in the New Testament, in the Bible is about salvation or damnation. We can't escape that. People don't want to talk about that. Salvation is having an exemption from the wrath of God that's coming and hell fire eternal. Eternal life is about bliss in heaven ruling and reigning with him. Can someone say amen? So you have salvation and you have eternal life. And we taste of that eternal life by the power of the Holy Ghost, can someone say amen? Mm -hmm. We have a taste of that and we partake of that or we partake of holiness. And that's what he wants, that we partake of his holiness. And we allow him to chasten us for the chastening of the Lord is grievous. But in due season and time it will work the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And isn't that true when we're walking in the light of his word day after day? In walking in his righteousness, aren't you at peace? Deep with him and with the Lord and with those you can be at peace with. Some you can't, can't you? You? you can turn yourself upside down and you can stand on your head all day. You might be at peace with some people. There's no getting round it, you know what I mean? So, uh, on the newsletter, they ruined my life. Who did? Who did? And let me ask another question, not only who did, but what, what spirit led you there <laughs> to this house of ruination and this place of ruination? And... Uh, were you maybe giving heed to deceiving spirits? And you look, you don't give heed to deceiving spirits without first departing from the doctrine, do you? Deceiving spirits are unclean and devilish. You're listening today. Always that departure first, and you got them on the TV, you know, bad mouth and. Um, uh, churches and Christ and saying that they're a cult and this is a cult look I tell you they ruined my life that old cliche you know what they're really saying oh they ru they ruined my sin life they ru that church ruined my sin life and now I can't go out and, and drink in the pubs and chase the gals as they call them I can't, you know, chase the stallions. I can't go out and do what I want to do anymore. You know what I mean? But I found the church finally where they'll, you know, they let me roll up once a year and and we do still have the tree in the corner and, and we always make sure tooth and nail to buy eggs. We always get those... Uh, and you know, if I do a bit of overtime, we can get chocolate, chocolate eggs. Oh, and the children are happy with us then. Oh. Boy, oh boy, you know, it's confusing, isn't it? These are the days of confusion. The Lord said they would come, and He even said He'd hand them over. It's a bit like you, you've all heard of Jackie Chan, haven't you? 
Oh, oh. Well, I was um, sitting there pondering on that word confusion the other day and I was thinking of that, there's another bloke, imaginary bloke, called um, Billy Whack. Okay, Jackie Chan, ha! But Billy Whack, you know, whack you, you know. <laughs> Billy Whack was talking to Confucius. Yeah, they're both Oriental. Billy Whack and Jackie, see Jackie and Billy, Chan and Whack. And uh, talking to Confucius, you know. And Confucius said to Billy Whack, oh, because Billy Whack asked Jackie Chan, uh, ja uh, Confucius something, <laughs> see. Yeah, and I'm getting confused. <laughs> and Billy Whack said to Confucius, what, what's the matter? What, what the matter? Ah, uh, Confucius? And Confucius said, Oh, I'm confused. No, I'm confused. <laughs> and Billy Wax said, Wow, you like Kung Fu? <laughs> and Confucius said, No! <laughs> no, I like Kung Fu. I'm confused. <laughs> I know I'm like confused. I know I'm like the confused. I don't like Kung Fu. I am confused. <laughs> and then Billy Wang said, Oh, you're confused. Are you confused? Oh. Oh. <laughs> So I said that to say this. <laughs> uh, come on, we got to settle down here today. We can't be laughing. No, not allowed to, not allowed to laugh in, 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 in the meeting. You know, we got to be religious. <laughs> so, no, come on. Um, I forgot where I was. They ruined my life. They, ru they ruined my sin life. A lot of people running around and they're saying, oh, that pastor and that fettuccine and that man, that woman, that person, that this, that, they've ruined my life. Then I want to ask another question. It's definitely a question, though, to say, with answers and Q&A. <laughs> and uh, the question is, where, oh, where was your heart at this time when they uh, ruined your life? The, the, the scripture at the top of the page, I believe God, I believe God, I tell you. Galatians put, Holy Ghost sent through Paul, a man and a woman, don't be deceived. You're going to reap what you sow. You sow watermelon seeds, you're not going to reap pineapples. And you sow in seeds there, it's shifty seeds, I call them. Shifty seeds. And your heart's not right with God. And you landed yourself. Look, some people go to churches today, sister, thank you for that, yes. Some people go to churches today just to hear for the music. I've heard them say it. Publicly. Oh, well, we, we started to go to that church because the music was lovely. There was a woman testifying about the Brethren Church the other night. We went there because the music and the orchestra and the choir. Is that the leading of the Spirit of God? Do you really believe that the Holy Ghost would lead a family and a people to go to a particular church and meeting and hear the minister because they love the music? No, we're not led by the music. Okay? Music. In the world was my first love and it was my last. You know, it gave me a bit of a buzz, a bit of a tingle. But, uh, and I actually thought when I first came to the Lord I could carry that on into my um, Holy Ghost walk but the Lord soon chopped me one and said, no, you won't be. And I just got rid of it all. When I drove my car I wouldn't even have the radio on for the first five years. 
I just wouldn't have any confusion, you know. Oh, not like Kung Fu. I had Kung Fu. I don't, not like Kung Fu. <laughs> oh, you're confused. You are confused. Oh, not like Kung Fu. I am confused. See, then I wasn't confused because I sowed the right seed. See, I forever sow the immortal seed. I will forever sow the word of God into my life and into everyone else's life. You know what I mean? You can sow all sorts of things. <laughs> Even on a sewing machine. Now, you, can <laughs> you can sow all sorts of things. But I mean, when you sow the word of God, you're sowing eternal stuff. <laughs> this is inner resources material. <laughs> so, what spirit led you there? Oh, they done this and they done that. You know, like, like, like. And then I go on in the newsletter 435, 2968. Come on. We don't want to be distracted by our thoughts wandering off somewhere else to McDonald's or somewhere. And I talk here about my heart attack and head-on collisions that I had when I was a motorcycle rider and accidents after accident after accident. The, the powers of darkness ultimately didn't want me to come to be ministering today. 29th of the 6th saint. All sorts of bashings and bruising, beating, and trying to deter me. But the Lord has it, had his way in the end. Okay? The Lord had his way in the end. And I've only mentioned a few on the news that I could go on and on and on. I fell off a freezer one time. I was working as an apprentice electrical fitter mechanic on the Gladstone freezers up in the um, uh, Gladstone Harbour Board area on the freezers there and I was kneeling over the top running a bit of conduit along the top of the freezers it's huge and it was about a 15 foot fall and I slipped and I went head first into the concrete out and I, I shook a bit on the ground, they, I think my brother-in-law thought I was dead because I was working under my brother-in-law and I was doing my correspondence college on the, as an apprentice and he, he came down the ladder and he said, you alright? and I was a bit of a shake around, you know and then it stiffened out a bit and got up. <laughs> and got on with the day's work. And I'm a bit groggy. He said, you sure you're right? I said, I'll be right. There's another incident. Head dive. Just spear tackle into the concrete. Bang! I'm still standing here. You know, memory of an elephant. And because of the hand of God. Even while I was in my sin. He was saying, oh, watch this piece. I'll, I'll bring him through this. I want to use this fellow. Going to slay many a religious devil. Hey? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Brought me through. Look, talk about dangerous toys and snares. <laughs> well, I've only mentioned a few on here. If you've got a few weeks, we can talk about the others. That's joined by DVD. This is my CD in World Wide Web. There's a wonderful scripture smack bang in the middle here. Uh, Proverbs 26, coming from uh, the wisest man that ever walked, Solomon, King Solomon. God gave him the wisdom, of course. Most men and women will proclaim their own goodness loudly, but who can find a truly faithful man or woman? I mean, like that woman I was on the TV the other night, shooting the mouth off about, oh, the brethren were this and the brethren were that, and they'd done this to me, they ruined my life, blah, 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 you know, proclaiming her goodness. 
You know, I reckon if you got the other side of the story, you find out a few hairy things. There'll be a few hairy tales there. Can you say amen? You might want to say, oh my, oh why? You know, the old story of I was molested for 15 years. I find that hard to swallow. You know what I mean? I really find that hard to swallow. That can go on and on and on like that. And the person goes along with it. I find that hard to swallow. A lot of people would think, you know, all sorts of things for me saying that, but I find it hard to swallow. And a person just keeps going, especially over the age, you know, when you, you start to get up in the years and they still allow this thing to go on and on and on. No. It needs a bit more of examination, doesn't it? You need to have a closer look. So brushing over things, you know, quick sweeps. We need a thorough purging of all things. All this gossip and rubbish talk, one side of the fairs, you know, this coin with one side all the time. What can you buy? You can't buy my attention with a coin with one side. You can't buy anything with that. You won't buy my attention or approval with a conversation or some rubbish gossip, one sign. I want to hear the full story from both parties. Can you say amen? Then we'll, then we'll get down to the nitty gritty, won't we? Be able to judge a bit of righteous judgment. And I believe the scripture at the top of the newsletter here today, I, I go along with that. I'm happy to, to get, yeah, I'm pleased with you reap what you sow. I'm, I'm really. Yeah, oh yeah, I think that's the perfect um, picture of equity. He's a God of equity. I go along with that. I was sowing the truth down in, a, in West End and this Muslim tried to kill me. You read what you sow. You sow the truth day in, day out, they're not going to be slapping you on the back. You're going to be a target. They're going to come after you. They did to Jesus. He spoke the truth, didn't he? What did they do to him? Took him to the restaurant. Bought him roses and flowers, uh, roses and chocolates, didn't they? They said, oh, we're going to have to seat you in the Senate. We'll have to let you in, family first. Jesus running family first. We'll have to let you in the Senate. They hung him up. They hung him up. They crucified him. As one elderly man, he would have been 70 to 80 year old, said to me in the Fortitude Valley years and years ago, I'm on the street preaching there and he said, listen, he said, you know, you're preaching that Jesus. Going on about that Jesus, are you? I said, yeah. He said, well, you know what? He said, they're going to end up doing to you what they've done to him. Hung him up. They'll hang you up. I said, yeah, well, praise God. Is there any greater blessing to be hung up in the name of Jesus? I tell you what, if you uh, you won't have any hang-ups if, you ha- if you're hung up for Jesus. You won't have any rubbish, emotional rescue, rubbish hang-ups and insecurities and ugh, what a load of hogwash. See, honesty, truth and humility keeps you away from that rotten, stinking lion road. They ruined my life. Keeps you away from that rubbish. They ruined my life. Who did? And why I ask, um, what spirit actually led you there? I believe false prophets for false people. I've always have and always will. Because that's what the Bible says to me in general. It says false prophets for false people. And you're sitting in the church where they're blabbing on about money and gain and gloss and gross income and double mortgages and blah, 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 blah. They're blabbing on about, you know, forget the law of God and Grace is unconditional. Once saved, always saved. Name in the book of life forever. 
God loves everyone. He doesn't hate the workers of iniquity. That's a lie. Just erase that scripture, Psalm 5, 5. God hates the workers of iniquity. Erase uh, uh, um, Psalm 7 and 11. Erase that too, which says, you know, God is angry with the wicked every day, the sinner every day. Erase all that. If you're in a church like that, that's where you belong. Because you're false and they're false and you two peas in a pot. I believe that. People come whinging to me and they start saying, oh, this church done this and that and they're teaching that and blah, blah, blah. I said, what were you doing there? Oh, there's a lot of good people in that church. We've heard it all before, haven't we? Oh, there's a lot of good people in there. I, I heard a minister, or I reckon he's a minister, Reckons he's a minister. Phil Powell, Mr. X, AOG, ex superintendent of AOG. I, I heard him in a writing of his say that he believes that there's actually Christians in the Roman Catholic Church. He doesn't believe that uh, there couldn't be. He actually believes that. I'll show you the writer. It's just done recently. You read it for yourself. He believes that there's actually people of God in the Roman Catholic Church. Now that, that's impossibility. Absolutely imp- impossibility. And uh, if I've quoted the man wrongly, I'm the first to say I'll be willing to apologise if I've quoted him wrong. But I'm going to have another look at that in his magazine and I'll, we can all look at it together. Do you, can you say amen to that? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, these are the days we're living in. And that man said he contends for the faith. Well, so does Dave Hunt. Dave Hunt, um, an evangelical, if anything, he claims with T.A. McMahon that they check everything with the scriptures like the Bereans. The Bereans call, they call themselves. He checks everything with the scriptures. He couldn't possibly check everything with the scriptures because the scriptures say you can forfeit your salvation. (laughs) The scriptures say you can be in Christ and be thrown out, taken away. Not on a holiday. The scriptures say if you're lukewarm and you don't repent, he'll spew you out of his mouth. He doesn't want you in his body. You know, when you vomit something out of your body, you don't want it in your body, do you? Well, when Jesus said, I'll spew you out of my mouth, that means you won't be in his body. You're listening? Yeah. And Mr. Wilkerson, the so-called prophet, and he backed down and said, oh, I'm not a prophet anymore, but I've heard him saying on his tongue. Years and years ago. And sometimes we forget these things. But we're called to our remembrance by the Spirit of God, aren't we? We're, we're given everything to remember by the Spirit. So who sows the seed? We sow our own seed, whatever it may be, and then we reap the harvest thereof. I've got no complaints with what I'm reaping. I don't have one complaint with what I'm reaping because I sowed it. We reap what we sow. I'm quite rejoicing, actually. I just keep getting revelation after revelation. That says to me the honour of God. God honours me, not with the material things of the world, but with the treasures of heaven that you can't get in any shop or from any Bible college or from any philosopher or from any biochemist or anyone else. The rest just keep going in the same old, same old circle. Money buildings and bombs, smoke bombs, causing people to be passive smokers and imputing cancerous fumes <laughs> into into their congregation. 